Hello, welcome to Relationship Helpers. Today's topic is stress-free family holidays. The month of December is National Stress-Free Family Holidays Month. And just recently, Vincent and I gave a presentation for mothers of preschoolers at a local church. And the topic was how to de-stress the holidays. In an effort to kind of create that presentation, we kind of looked back over some things that we'd written in the past. And one thing that I had written was an article on how to de-stress the holidays. And in that article, I had talked about a figure, a character, someone that I think most of us are familiar with, and that's the character of Clark W. Griswold. He's the protagonist of the movie National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. I think that we can all remember how Clark responds to the stress of Christmas and being with family. What we'd like to start with is kind of taking a look at how Clark, or what Clark wants in the movie. What is his motivation? So Vincent, what are some things you see in Clark W. Griswold? What does he want? First of all, I think, you know, woohoo, it's the holidays. The holidays are coming along and, uh, you know, a lot of people are excited about it. Should be excited about the holidays. And, but some people aren't so excited about the holidays. There's, there's. All the busyness, all the getting together, maybe these assumptions, these demands. When I think of the holidays now, it used to be, well, it seemed like at least with TV, not that I grew up watching a lot of TV, well, maybe I did watch a lot of TV, but we used to watch, or it seemed to come on TV every year would be It's a Wonderful Life, and, and now it's replaced by you know, National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation. Or maybe that's just TBS. They played all day long, or one of those. Or, or that's an interesting progression there yeah, in movie so. history and the right, reflection yeah. of our society. <laughs> well, and Christmas Story <laughs> seems to be one on there as well a lot. But yeah, I, I think about this. You know, why does it resonate so much with everybody? I think it's what you said. It's it's uh, Chevy Chase's character there that he is trying to recreate this perfect, or trying to create this perfect. Christmas. He has the perfectly decorated house. He has all of the family over, not just a little bit of it, but everybody over at the Even family. Even ones he didn't expect. Right, <laughs> yes. And the perfect meal even the turkey looks perfect on the right? outside but we know what that inside looks yes. like <laughs> and, and he's even got the perfect gift the the pool that he's planning on giving to his family so everything there is just trying to knock it out of the park <laughs> you know all of these just kind of over the top type expectations i guess or all to be deflated by the reality of the uh, jelly of the month club right yes, <laughs> yeah, right 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 so it sounds like what you're saying vincent is that clark wants an ideal he wants a perfect looking christmas he wants something that maybe he's created in his mind that kind of harkens back to some magic in his life which goes to that actually makes me think of that scene in the movie where he gets locked in the attic his family is lost in the hustle and bustle of trying to get to christmas shopping at the mall and clark accidentally gets himself locked in the attic and when he's in the attic uh, he gets cold because they're up there in Illinois and it's cold out. He starts rummaging through the attic and finds these clothes, these old clothes from older family members past. And he puts them on and he's trying to warm up and he's rummaging through and he finds old Christmas gifts in the rafters that he forgot to give people because they got lost. But the, the main thing that stands out in that scene is when he grabs the movie reel and he puts it in the projector and he sits back and he watches that video of him as a child and the magic of Christmas. Right, it stirs up all those emotions he had from when he was a childhood and the holidays it's, it's a real full circle moment in that movie where you see exactly where Clark is coming from and the motivation behind why he's stringing lights all over his house. and Right, so this is kind of showing the heart of, of him, where his heart is really at, which is maybe trying to have the perfect or the ideal Christmas, or he's trying to recreate 
what he had in his childhood and trying to maybe even correct those times or those areas that didn't go so well maybe well so that brings us to to you the listener what do you want your holiday to look like Laura's came up with the holiday scale of stress, and these are going to be the areas that we're going to talk about. These are six different areas. Of course, there could be more, but there's just six that we're going to talk about here today. That's right. There's plenty to talk about in the holidays that we can't possibly cover in one podcast episode, like grief and loss and the holidays and things of that nature, but we're going to focus solely on some of the things that you can do to remove some of the stress from the environment <laughs> right and, and now here's one that kind of in i don't know what you would say summarizes and encapsulates all of them this was like a quote that i'm gonna quote laura here instead of her <laughs> saying i'm gonna quote it she says other than loss and loneliness i think the number one reason people struggle with the holidays is the inability to say no Uh oh, folks, we're getting deep. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So here are those uh, six holiday scales of stress. The first one is staying at someone else's home or having others to stay at your house, Uh, visiting multiple places in just a matter of one or two days. Number three, providing food for these different situations when you are not home to cook or have the time. Number four, sleeplessness. Number five, unhealthy food or beverage consumption. And the last one, having to face awkwardness or unresolved family issues that comes from being with a family that you try to avoid year-round. This is a loaded one, folks. Okay, so we're going to start with staying at someone else's home. Many folks find themselves having to travel halfway across the country or even further (laughs) to find that they are going to be sleeping on the floor or on a couch or something definitely not what they're used to in their regular uh, sleep routine. So here's some questions that we will start with looking at. Does the host family struggle with boundaries? Will you get a good night's sleep? Is it safe to stay there? Is it safe for the children? And will staying at their house benefit or damage your relationship with them? Right, and let's go to that safe. I mean, this is what some families are. Does one of the host persons, do they struggle with an addiction? Do they struggle with you know alcoholism, alcoholism. or uh, pain medication addiction? Or are they, you know, is it pornography that you're watching? I mean, is there something? Or are they cursing? Are they rageaholics? Are they putting everybody down? I mean, is it safe for the kids there? Or are they... Uh, I mean, they could have been accused of uh, molestation of children. I mean, all these factors, you know, is this a safe place really for you to be, for your children to be? These are really important things to consider. I think sometimes we get in a bubble when it comes to the holidays and we think, oh, you know, we have that magic of Christmas, that idealism, and we don't think things through sometimes about the safety. Another thing to consider is um, when you have children, especially young children, but even teenagers, be mindful that some sometimes family has these expectations about giving hugs or kisses hello and that's something that we need to change i mean as a society i think we need to take a look at how we you know we greet one another because that places children in the uncomfortable position of having to be in really close physical proximity with people that they may not know that well and we may not know that well themselves because we know as counselors that molestation is more likely to occur between family members so it's important to be able to discuss with your spouse what your expectations are in terms of if your children being with other people and greeting other people and then also discussing with your children that it is perfectly fine to wave hello or fist bump or, you know, blow a kiss or something like that. Right. You don't have to have that physical touch. Right. So this could be your cousin's new fiance or something or your crazy uncle's <laughs> or, yeah, or your aunt's. Th- that, you uh, know, that brings up a good point. I mean, there are cousin Eddie's out there that show up at Christmas that you're not expecting. And so you need to be prepared that somebody you don't know or somebody that you don't know well could be at your event right or your kids don't realize you don't know them well right right 
That they may be there on the assumption that they know you and they just do extend the same cordiality or greetings to that person that they do to everyone else, assuming that you know them, assuming that they're safe when maybe they're not so safe. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So let's look into some of the solutions for staying at someone else's house. Maybe some suggestions here. Okay, so the most costly one is staying in a hotel. Costly financially, but it really could be buying you some peace of mind and some physical boundaries. Right, and you could pair that with you know, maybe some other excursion. You could tell them, hey, we're going to stay in a hotel because we're going to go do this as well. This activity. We're gonna, yes, this activity on this day, and we're going to do this activity on this day, and it'll just be much simpler to do that. You may encounter a family member that may seem offended by the fact that you are suggesting that you're going to stay in a hotel, but when you are able to communicate to them that you'll be staying in a hotel, but that you have intentionally created time for spending with them, you know, an activity, some specific activity, then that's good. You may, instead of staying a whole week at their home, you may limit the amount of days, maybe only a couple of nights there instead of the whole week, or switching that about part of the time of the hotel, part of the time at their house, where it's not so long, where it's not such an inconvenience uh, for them. That's just another option. But here's the big one, I feel, is for you and your spouse getting together and writing down these expected boundaries or necessities and then sharing that with the host. And not only sharing what your expectations are with the host, but actually asking the host, and and this is what someone had mentioned in our talk, you know, asking the host what are their expectations and understanding that and getting kind of a clear communication, especially if you have small children or especially if there are animals involved, whether they have animals, you have animals, talking about what are your expectations, what are your boundaries for these animals, for these children, you know, for your nap time, not having nap time. Should there be, or food limits, you know, ones that said, you know, maybe a sugar limit, letting grandma know, okay, they can have a little bit more sugar than they normally do, but here's the limit. You can't keep <laughs> giving them Skittles. You can't keep giving them all the, you, you know, having these discussions Yeah, with grandmother everyone. doesn't have to put them to bed. <laughs> right, or grandfather doesn't either, So, or even cousin there that's giving them all these, you know, discussing all of these limits, all these boundaries, so that you're all really on the same page. Will, will make it very healthy, even talking about the discipline with the kids as well. And one of the last solutions for staying at someone else's home is possibly don't, maybe not going every year, but communicating that, right. having that plan that, you know, we may be staggering years or staggering stays or whatever. Mm-hmm. All right. So the, uh, the flip side of this is having others stay at your home. And so some questions to consider there. Is this an idea that you want to become a tradition? And I think we need to stop right there and look at that because that seems to be a, a, a thought process people get stuck in. It's like, you know, are we creating a tradition? You know, we're because we did it this year, we have to do it all other years or that kind of thing, which um, I think what we're overall talking about is flexibility. too. Right. And this may just cause some false assumptions mm-hmm. that, that need to be talked about. So another thing, uh, what expectations do you have of your guests? We'll get a little bit further into that in some of the other topics that we talk about today, but that could include, you know, are they bringing food? Are they going to help with cleanup or, you know, those kind of things. Right, yeah, that includes the food preparation and who supplies what, when, Mm -hmm. where. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You also have to consider for your own peace of mind, when are you ready to receive guests? I mean, if you're saying you want people to be there on Christmas Eve, when Christmas Eve? Is it Christmas Eve morning? Is it Christmas Eve evening? It's a lot to prepare for for a household household full of guests. Mm -hmm. Do you have other activities that you may be doing that won't involve your guests right so communicating those hey we're gonna go out to this or do this Mm -hmm. church activity we're gonna go right i mean we're gonna go caroling i don't know or go watch the nutcracker just the four of us we only got four tickets or whatever (laughs) yeah and and being clear and up front with your guests that you actually have some other thing planned that, that doesn't involve them but also letting them know that there's some alternative things that they can do well and let me let me put this this is another one that i talk to my couples about when they're playing and many times i do like to meet with i do a lot of marriage counseling i do like to meet with my couples especially before the holiday so that they come up with a game plan <laughs> so this is a plan and one of them is you know when can they take a break 
So sometimes you need a break from your guests mm -hmm. who are there. And, and I'm saying a break for the husband, a break for the wife. And also, when can they have a time where they can, just the two of them can talk to each other and kind of process what's going on. If there's something they need to deal with, if it's the, the dog that's messing all over the house, or if it's the kid <laughs> that's screaming all night, or that mom and dad's, you know, not taking care of, or that there's your brother's new wife's kids are rambunctious and they're tearing up a certain area you know how are we to deal with this kind of what whatever the problem or whatever the situation is having a plan as far as hey we can go meet here we're going to meet in the laundry room and that's where it's a safe place for us to talk about it in case our bedroom isn't <laughs> as it normally it could be occupied be. <laughs> right it could be occupied or whatever but coming up with that you know here we need to go talk about this or having that word that hey we code need word go, code word we need to go to the laundry room or we need to go get uh, some more paper plates and i need you to help me pick them out all right, all right, right. <laughs> that kind of thing <laughs> the next one we're going on down is uh, or here are some solutions to having uh, others to stay at your home along with these these plans i was talking about I think Vincent brings up a good, he brings something up good, and, and I, I failed to mention this earlier as I see this in my own counseling practice. This is the time of the year that both Vincent and I really have to spend a lot of time with our clients on planning. And sometimes they'll come in and they're not even thinking about that. That's not on their minds, but I guess as counselors through the years, we end up having to put out fires after the fact, so it's the after Christmas Right, so people just mindlessly go into the holidays without really planning. They just do what they've always done. They're not really proactive. They're just kind of reactive to all of what happens. That's why today you're going to hear us discuss a lot about planning. It really serves you well to, to walk into a holiday season with plans. So right, so that's the first thing that we talk about is, again, kind of like the other, is sitting down with your spouse and not just talking about it. Yes, you're going to talk about what boundaries, what expectations, uh, what rules that you want for your guests, but uh, write those down as well. And and as when we were talking with the, the group of mothers, you know, writing a schedule down. You know, one of them talked about writing the schedule and how valuable that was, writing that schedule. So everybody knew where you were going to be at what time or when this was. When, and when bedtime is for when, the kids. Right, when bedtime for little kids. So grandmother and grandfather know that time, and aunts and uncles and cousins know that as well. Mm-hmm. Communication goes a long way. Being direct goes a long way. And being direct really doesn't require a lot of effort. Consider how much effort you put into the anxiety that comes after the fact when things aren't planned out well. Right, and how much energy it really saves when yes. you're proactive and you begin with all of this. So important to clearly communicate your expectations and rules to your guests. Ask your guests if they have any expectations or needs. There may be some dietary concerns or... Grandpa may need to go to bed at a certain time or good to go ahead and ask them if they have special needs that right. need to be taken care of. Right. If they've got to uh, eat their pills at a certain time, <laughs> so they really need to have dinner at this time and lunch at this time because they're supposed to eat take their pills on a full meal. That's, hey, a, you that's bring a consideration. Up, hey, hey, that's a, that's another scene from the movie Christmas Vacation because the the family was rushing out the door to get to the mall. And that's when, when Clark got locked in the attic because grandfather needed to be able to get to the food court to be able to eat to take his pills to take his pills and right. see what happened clark got locked in the attic because it wasn't communicated clearly in advance right right <laughs> all right so uh let's take a look at there's some other solutions to uh, have another stay at your home we've talked about writing down a schedule but well, the last could be tell them that you cannot host them this year. Yeah, that just wouldn't be convenient. You just don't have the resources or the time or that work's been too busy, the kids are exhausted, whatever it is, which is going back to that actually giving them a no, which many times is very difficult. Right, and you may be in a season in your family where – you may have particularly young children, and breaking routine may not be a good thing. I mean, you right. may have a baby that's teething. Or they've been or, sick for a while, or, or your grandparents are sick, or your parents are, have been sick, and you don't want them all together. Right, or you may be potty training. Or, mm -hmm. right? There could be things that just doesn't make it very practical right now and would just kind of detract from the experience. 
Right. So now we're going on to the next one. This is visiting multiple places in just a matter of one or two days. Okay. So doing that can lead to exhaustion. It can lead to sickness because you're visiting with multiple people, not getting a chance to rest. You're not getting to spend much time with the family. Of course, with the little children, as we mentioned, it gets them out of routine, making people cranky and all sorts of problems there. Here's some maybe solutions to this visiting multiple places in a limited period of time. Number one could be just rotating your visitation. Go to one side one year and go to the other side the next year. You know, if they're in different states and you, you, know, you just can't do it or, it's, or if it's a long distance, if this is a two-hour drive from one to the other, just say we're going to go Thanksgiving this year to your house. Next year we're going to go to their house for Thanksgiving. Or... You could, you know, Thanksgiving your house this year and then Christmas at the other person's so that you're staggering Thanksgiving and Christmas. Right. right. Another solution, and this is what some of the moms had mentioned that they have done, is we're not going anywhere. <laughs> we're not going to go anywhere. You're welcome to come to us. You can come and visit us. We've got little children. It's too difficult to, for them to go back and forth. It's just exhausting, but you can come to us at at whichever, such and such time at a being certain very times. specific right yeah. so that may be a solution inviting them to your house instead of you're going to them uh, another one may be and this was other moms that talked about this that they had worked it out over the years is visiting you know, not necessarily on that specific day of the holiday don't see christmas as a fixed day right so you yeah. may do one side the weekend before and the other side the weekend after and mm -hmm. just leave let's say christmas just for your nuclear family just for yourself and your children mm -hmm. i think that taking out some of that hustle and bustle really allows for that christmas spirit to kind of really shine yeah and i think in this area too you may run into, of course, some opposition. Every time you set up boundaries, you change things. There is maybe some opposition. But then again, as some of the other mothers said, that others were actually thinking what you're thinking. They just never verbalized it just like you hadn't verbalized. <laughs> They've been doing it for the last five years or so going here, and they were thinking, hey, we'd really like to change this up. This is really too difficult for our kids as well, you know, my, or whatever. My sister, she's saying it's just as bad, or my brother's saying this is just as difficult for them, and they're really wanting to change it up as well. So maybe you really need to be the one to step up and verbalize it. Everybody's thinking it, but they're not really saying it. Maybe you need to be the one. And listener today, I'm going to encourage you. Maybe right. there's a reason why you're hearing this message from us today. Maybe you're the one that needs to be the one to, to communicate it. that. Yes. Right, yes. And there's these kind of hidden rules <laughs> in your family about the holidays that aren't talked about and maybe need to be talked about which brings us to the next topic which is providing food when you're not home to cook or have the time one of the quotes in the article i wrote about this was you're famous for your pecan pie and if you don't take it you're less of a person that's kind of like you know these hidden expectations that oh aunt sally makes the pecan pie and such or a pecan such, pie yeah <laughs> well i think there's three different ways to pronounce <laughs> okay, pecan, right. pecan 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 so, i don't know <laughs> but anyway it depends on which part of the south you're from right. basically <laughs> right <laughs> i know i was confused about that as a child i'd have different aunts and uncles <laughs> talk about differently okay good sorry oh, no, no, that, that's just fine but anyway um uh, so food seems to be a pretty popular topic and one that can create quite a bit of dissension actually and i think it goes back to those hidden rules of the family hidden assumptions or expectations like i said you know there's such and such such and such makes the perfect fill in the blank I think once you get past those assumptions, though, and you really allow some freedom with the food prep and all that, you find that Christmas is actually so much lighter and so much easier to enjoy. So we're going to give you some solutions here for food prep. Or some ideas yeah, here. Some because, ideas. yes, I feel like in the United States, definitely, that food is a big thing. It, it is. It is. It, it's one of the things that when you ask people about Christmas time, one of the things that they can really reflect on they they'll, they'll tell you about some special dish or 
such and such that's associated with that special dish. <laughs> right. So here's some solutions. <laughs> right. Okay. So it could be cooking something and freezing it a month earlier. It could be like making some shortcuts by buying some pre-made food from your grocer's deli, or you may have a local restaurant that deep fries turkeys really well. Right. Uh, you just need to get that order in time. Uh, agree to be the one who brings the paper products, especially if you're traveling. It's it, the idea of having freshly made food and getting it there, especially if you're over an hour away, can really be taxing. And stop over identifying with what you bring and put more focus on the who you will be with. Right. We had one lady, she talked about this, that for years she prepared the food and whenever her family came from out of state or wherever they came to visit her and she did this but she didn't really like to cook that was not her thing she didn't enjoy that she really enjoys cleaning and making sure things are neat and organized being a hostess that way that that kind of way that's where her gifts were that's where her more of her passion that's where she's more comfortable versus her sister really liked to cook so it wasn't until a few years later that she actually talked to her sister about this and she kind of relinquished her no these unspoken host duties of having to to cook everything and allowed her sister to do what she really enjoys so uh, making it really her she said she would make her house really more like a condo that everybody was renting <laughs> and each person had different duties whichever job that they feel most comfortable with that's what they did and it really contributed to everyone having a much better experience right what i'm hearing is the anxiety the stress was lowered for everyone when that happened right let's get on to sleeplessness this one's a big topic folks this is the time of year where all of the bugs come out the flu and all those nasty germs (laughs) and you know that when you don't get enough sleep you're more susceptible to catching this stuff And spreading it throughout the family in the holiday cheer. No. (laughs) Anyway, uh, so let's talk about sleeplessness. Traveling, kids getting up early to see what Santa left, you know, late night party attendants. All of these things contribute to being off sleep schedule and just irritability. Yeah, so let's talk about the effects of sleeplessness. Like Laura said, uh, one of the main ones is irritability, and that doesn't help with your conversations with people if you're irritable with your having quality time and being present with other family members mm. if you're irritable because you haven't slept well or you slept on a couch that i don't know was in your back or something and you weren't <laughs> able to sleep or and, and let's face it you may be hanging out with some people that you really don't want to be hanging out with. Well, there may be some difficult conversations. And so if you're <laughs> or at least already, boring to listen to, right? <laughs> and so if you're already sleep deprived and you know you're going to be talking with someone or hanging around someone that you may not want to spend much time with, yeah. <laughs> so effects of sleeplessness, irritability, headaches, difficulty concentrating, like Laura said, more susceptible to sickness. If you're sleepy, you're not getting the rest. And if you're traveling a lot, of course, a greater risk of a car accident if you're not getting the sleep that you really need. So here's some solutions for getting more sleep during the holidays. Okay, extra nap time for kids and adults. This may sound impossible, but you really need to protect that time. You need to draw that boundary for your family, for your children. Right, so adult nap time. That's what <laughs> Laura is saying. Of course, you're going to have naps for the kids. You better have these naps for the kids. But, yes, taking time for yourself, just to, even if you don't nap, to rest. Setting aside, putting boundaries around that rest time. Right, and I, and I think that when you communicate to people that, that you're taking a nap, I think most people are actually going to be agreeable, and they'll be like, man, I feel like I need one too. <laughs> <laughs> right. Especially if you're talking to the host and hostess of the right. house. Okay, uh, allowing for more time to travel. That may mean leaving a day early and stopping to rest at a hotel one night. 
rather than powering through. Right, to get instead to that of house. feeling so rushed and right. pressured that you have to be there at a certain time or have to do this <laughs> or have to save so much money on your traveling. Right, and another one, going to bed earlier on Christmas Eve. Now, I know this one could be a hot topic for parents because that is the time when the bikes get put together and all the different accoutrement of, <laughs> of, <laughs> of, of, of Christmas morning. It all gets kind of slammed into Christmas Eve night, but that would be the perfect opportunity for you to enlist in the help of the extended family that you're with. Right. We One this of the ladies is, spoke up and, and mentioned how they had asked, I don't know, was it an uh, uncle or cousin other or people. something like that to come over, ones that didn't have kids, to come over and help them the assemble. day before. Assemble. So it was the men assembling things. And see, this is great because this is getting them to do something productive. Sometimes we're all just kind of crammed in like sardines and we're not, we don't know what to do and we're uncomfortable. This is giving them kind of like a quote unquote job to do, but they feel like, you know, wow, on Christmas morning, morning the kids are going to wake up and they're going to see these toys toys put together and they're gonna feel good about that so that's a good job right and it's it can actually be a bonding time for the adults when they're uh, these men have right. these task of you know sometimes, assembling these yeah. things men, together men sometimes don't want to talk they want to do they want to do right. things that's like the shop it's like going to the shop so this is this is santa's shop on christmas eve mm-hmm. and it could be a yeah like i say a real bonding time where they feel comfortable talking about how to put this together doing it and Spending time together when they don't always get the time, this time to spend together. Right. And, and and lastly, another solution for more sleep is sleeping in late on the days afterward. I would really encourage you to advocate for you and your family and saying that you need to get that nap after, after the fact, too. So let's take a look, Vincent, at unhealthy food and drink consumption. So this is the time of year where sugary, carby, Starchy things are consumed. All the good stuff, right? And then there's the (laughs) eggnog that has some kind of alcohol in it. And then there's just plain out alcohol. And right. this is a time where, you know, you know, also where people get sad and things. And if you're an alcoholic, you're more likely to imbibe in more of your favorite drink. So, right. So this might be the time that you're, you're drinking to numb your emotions. Right. Because so you don't feel this. You don't feel this pain. You don't feel this guilt. You don't feel whatever negative emotion that comes with the holidays. And a lot of people are not very social and they drink to make themselves feel more social, supposedly. They think they're doing that, but what it does is creates loose lips and then they may say something they regret. Right. So it's a recipe for potential family disaster. Right. And here's some of the mentality, which maybe needs to be changed. Yes, I'm (laughs) trying to think of the right word. So here are some, and I just wrote down a few of them. I don't know if if this is maybe just the American mentality. I believe it. I don't know. know It's a very Western thing. Very Western, very kind of American. So maybe the the more you eat, the better time that you'll have. I mean, some people are like, eat more, the better it is. I've got to eat so much at Thanksgiving. It's not a good Thanksgiving unless I eat a ton. They wear their stretchy pants that day. Right. (laughs) They're prepared. Right. Or I must uh, eat a lot to show the cook that I liked it. Yeah, like you're going to offend them if you don't eat a lot. Like your show. It's like a show. Right. Grandma will be upset if you don't. Mm. Or uh, the food is so good, I have to have seconds. That's kind of the food's good. I gotta have seconds. If I don't get the seconds, it means the food wasn't good. This is unspoken thing that that grandma or your aunt or your mom is watching to see if anybody gets seconds. They're only feeling validated if everybody goes and gets seconds. Or it could be that you just eat a bunch of junk food all the year all year round, and you get a lot of fast food, and you're finally getting some home cooked meals, and you're partaking a little too heavily out of the enjoyment of the matter (laughs) right right or even this as we talked before if you're not eating let's say aunt may's dessert or her pecan pies laura was saying uh, she will be offended you know these are some of the mentalities that you know all this has to be taking into consideration during the holidays with food so because of this overeating overconsumption mentality we end up being really tired sluggish we don't move as well. You're modeling this 
this eating behavior to your children. And also, it And your can, system can get out of whack. Oh, yes. You may be spending more time in the bathroom. Right. right. <laughs> That's not good when you're all holed up in the same house together. Right. <laughs> And two, um, another thing is uh, you, you could have uh, some self-esteem issues if you're finding yourself over-consuming during the holidays, and that could be a topic for another yep. discussion. Yeah, so here are some <laughs> solutions for healthy eating and drinking in the holidays. Number one would be to prepare raw vegetables or fruit as part of the meal. So those are some healthy things to eat while you're... And, and I've heard dietitians suggest, too, that if you know that you're getting ready to take on a, a meal, you're getting ready to eat a, a good meal with family, it may be a good idea to eat an apple or something prior to that, and you will find that you will consume less calories and feel less sluggish after the fact. Mm-hmm. And drinking a glass of water prior, too. Right, right. And even beginning to eat healthy before the holidays, begin that... <laughs> You know, year round instead of just at the holidays, where's the focus? Where's a habit already established? Yeah, we're not doing into... this January first New Year's thing where it's all after the fact. Go ahead right. before the holidays to set out some plans to start eating healthy before the holidays. Right, and another idea that I think is healthy is talking to your spouse, whoever you're with there, about your consumption of alcohol during the holidays whether or not consuming at all or limiting the amount just making sure that someone else is there to kind of help keep you accountable because at times you you it may get out of hand and you really don't realize it another option with food is that if you have that aunt may who makes that particularly good pecan pie pecan pie (laughs) you know you may rather than eating it when it's offered you may say hey can I take a slice home with me? Just showing that you are interested, but that you're not going to um, give yourself a bellyache. <laughs> right. So this will show her when she's leaving that she doesn't have much left on it because you've already taken off of them. And she may not even realize that you were put it in something to take home. But at least it shows her that people actually wanted it. Right. Yeah. Right. Where you are having and- to eat it right at that particular time but you put it in something and while she's walking out the door she can see that hey everybody really liked it because i don't have any left and technically once she's gone and you've got that piece of pie in your tupperware or your sandwich bag you could throw it away right (laughs) okay we're going to get to the last one which can be the most difficult out, out of all of these this is dealing with the awkward unresolved family issues This is the star of the show, folks. I think this is the one everybody's been waiting for. Okay, so we're going to look at the tips for dealing with unresolved family issues. During the Christmas holidays, we get all crammed together in in the same building. And, you know, you may have been avoiding these people all year round. So now it's time for catch up. You're getting to hear about every single problem. It's all coming at once because maybe you've avoided these people and now they've got to tell you. And it's exactly like that scene in the movie Christmas Vacation where when they all come in the door, they start talking about their feet hurting and this medical condition and that person died and it all just it all just kind of hits the fan at that point. Right. So here are some tips to begin with as you're dealing with some of these unresolved family issues. Number one is forget about trying to change the other person. Remember that you can only change yourself and how you react to others. You cannot change them. And be mindful of that. You can change how you you react to them and how you deal with them. And we'll kind of talk about some of that, some ways that you can do things differently, which a lot of that you know, changing yourself, changing how you, how you react, is we've already been talking about in these other ones. And, and basically it's ways of saying no, or ways of setting these boundaries. The boundaries, whether it's eating too much there, or staying at someone's house, or having the kids to take a nap, or you taking, whatever it may be. So forget about trying to change the other person. Remember, you can only change yourself or change your reactions. Another thing is asking yourself at a given time, am I making assumptions? 
assumptions and faulty expectations, they can grow like a snowball in an avalanche. Right. So we had, uh, in our discussion with this church group, we had a lot of ladies who talked about these assumptions they had for years. Assumptions, the one was talking about that she had to cook because people were coming to to their house. Uh, another assumption was that uh, uh, another family has with it. We have to do this on the specific holiday. You know, we have to meet on Christmas morning, or we have to meet at Chris, uh, Thanksgiving Day to have Thanksgiving. Are, are, are these faulty assumptions? Are these some things that, that need to be talked about? Another one faulty assumption that some others had was what they eat on the holiday, always thinking that we always have to have turkey or always have to have ham. When when they started talking to others, that's not necessarily the case. Others were open to different dishes. And most likely easier dishes that would be probably even more enjoyed than that dried out turkey. Right. Number three, another tip, our third tip here. Go ahead, Laura. Okay, so I call this the fussy toddler rule. I think parents will understand this, but hear me out on this. So more than likely, one of the reasons that you're feeling agitated during the holidays at a particular point in time is that you're hungry, you're tired, or you cannot communicate your needs in a clear way. That's what we call the the, the fussy toddler rule. Because, you know, when a child gets fussy it's usually one of those three things either hunger tiredness or the inability to communicate in a clear way so this works for adults too folks so we need to learn how to communicate like we've said countless times in today's episode a lot of times when we're able to just be direct and we say something out loud, it diffuses and it clears up situations. And people realize that for years they've been doing something that's been very taxing when all along they could have been doing something simple. So l- let's talk about the first words spoken sometimes are very important. And, and here's a suggestion when you talk to the person let's say somebody that's been kind of annoying you or something like that that's been different do not use you statements don't say you make me feel bad you come over here and do do not use you statements you want to escalate a conversation that'll do it really fast that is blame talk all the way right so instead of using you statements Start off with, or this is maybe in the middle of the conversation. Usually it's not good to start off with this anyway. Uh, What I suggest later is start off talking about some other things that are kind of allying statements, things that kind of align you together with each other. But then saying, I feel statements. So something like, I feel like you're not interested in spending time with me, mother, because you're over there watching the Christmas Day parade (laughs) during the morning and not spending time with the kids. So you see there, instead of saying, you, 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 it's coming across as, I feel. You're taking ownership of how you feel about it. Mm -hmm. Instead of blaming your mother saying, you, you don't care about my kids, (laughs) which of course wouldn't be a good way at all. So, so Vincent, if there is a particular topic that, or something that's really under your skin that needs to be talked about, let us, Tell us a little bit about how to be assertive in those situations. Okay, so if you must talk about it, here are some suggestions of the ways to talk about it. So make sure that you do it in an assertive way. And and assertive may be, a lot of my clients misunderstand it. They think assertive, when they hear assertive, they're really thinking aggressive in their mind. And I'm not meaning aggressive, but I'm not meaning passive. Assertive is that you talk to somebody and your body language is relaxed, you're calm, and, but you speak directly and honestly. So here, the, the first part about being assertive or making sure that you're going to say it in a healthy way is thinking about the atmosphere, even before you talk. So that goes back to that fussy toddler rule. Make sure, you know, is this person hungry? Are you hungry? If both mm-hmm. of you are hungry, get something in your mouth. Eat a little bit so that you feel a little more comfortable. Are there distractions? Think about the senses. Is the TV on? Do you need to turn the TV off? Do you need to take that person into another room so visually things aren't distracting? Or, you know, with the ear, sounds aren't distracting. Or thinking about the nose, you know, like we are saying, food. Or are there things uh, that are distracting with touch? 
Are they uncomfortable? Is it too hot, too cold where they're at? So think about the senses. Make sure the, the atmosphere there is healthy even before you open your mouth to talk about it. Because it, it may not be healthy right then, and it may not be the appropriate, or your timing may be all off at, at that point, you know, knowing where they're at, knowing how they feel in that moment. Now, if the atmosphere is good, then make sure both of you are sitting down. It's always much better to be seated when you're talking about it. Both of you are seated. Uh, your body language is relaxed. You are So this talking is very intentional. You've already kind of prepared what you're going to say. And so this begins with the content. The content of what you say begin with positive, as I was mentioning before, positive statements. And it may be something like this. Like, uh, let's say you're talking to your mother. Be like, Mom, you, you remember when we were little and we went and we got that tree and we brought it home and it took forever to get it, but we, we put it in the house and we decorated it. Everybody decorated the tree together. Dad was actually off of work and our... You know, my sister was there, and she helped do the ornaments while I did the the lights and untangled them. You know, I really enjoyed that time together. We really had a good time, and it seemed like things were relaxed, relaxed, and and not as stressful. See, that was a really long one. You don't always have to use long <laughs> ones like that, but you know, do some things that are out that where you can align with the other person, make them feel comfortable. Then you'll get to the meat part. So you start off with positives. Or, I mean, other positives could be, Mom, you know, I really, our kids really enjoy coming to your house. Uh, you, you cook very well. They love your food. They love to hang out with you and Dad. All right, there's positives. Then you come with the meat. However, when you give them too much candy, that really affects everyone because they get hyped up they get excited they're not able to take their naps at the right time it gets them really off schedule and it makes it a lot more stressful for me for my husband or so we're not spouse. able to sleep and <laughs> yes so so i would really like for you to limit that amount and to help us to get them to take their naps at the appropriate time you know, so there's the meat. So you give these positives, then you give the meat what you're really trying to convey to them. And then at the end, be like, Mom, I really appreciate all the work you've done in preparing your house for us to be here and the food you've done. And you know you do a, a great job with them. They enjoy it. I just want us to be more on you know, the same page here. And I know you do as well. You want us all to have a good time like we did before. So it's positives at the end there. So finish up by more positives. So th this would be, that's what I would call being assertive. Now, you don't always have to, this assertiveness doesn't always have to take a long time. It may be something short. Let's say you're in the kitchen and someone else is doing something like uh, trying to help you and maybe doing maybe a little bit overbearing in the mm -hmm. kitchen. So you may say something, I appreciate your help here, but this isn't really the time for you to put the garlic into. I think that's a little bit too soon. So you start out with a positive. You tell them that. But, you know, I really like how you've cut up the carrots over there. That's really good. That's a neat way of doing that. Positive at the end as well. Vincent, it sounds like what you're saying is just being assertive, it's very intentional. Yes, it is. So we're going to start to wrap things up today and look at some more solutions for making happy holidays. Um, instead of gifting objects, gift time so that things clutter life. Anyway, so giving gift certificates for concert shows, athletic events, trips that you take them on, good things to do. You know, what traditions do you want your family to have? And there's nothing wrong with changing traditions. Mm -hmm. So we really encourage you, I think through this whole message, all of the, we've been talking about, really encourage you to discuss this with your family, to open up communication about the holidays and how to make it more healthy, more enjoyable for everyone. Thank you for being with us here today on Relationship Helpers, and we hope that this was helpful for you. <laughs> Thank you for joining us today on Relationship Helpers. It is our hope that you gain some valuable information. For the show notes and more information on today's topic, please visit www.relationshiphelpers.net. Again, that is www.relationshiphelpers.net. If you enjoyed our show, please go to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and review. 
If you had questions or concerns about our show, please let us know about this as well by going to our website, www.relationshiphelpers.net. Thanks again and have a blessed week. Note that accuracy and authority in regards to the subject matter covered today is not a replacement for professional care. Neither the host, the clinicians, or the guests are rendering clinical or other professional advice. Seek professional help if you need it. Oh,